Hi everybody, welcome to another Derek Does. Today, we're gonna do this. Hi everybody, welcome back to another Derek Does. Thanks for joining us, and if you're new to the channel, please subscribe uh, and comment after you watch the video and watch some other videos, because it's full of cool vintage stuff, basically. It's kind of like what I do. Uh, but today, we're gonna do this. This is a classic 1950s bowling shirt. Uh, these were super popular. I, I, something that you don't, if you're, if you're not as old as I am, if you're younger, bowling in the 50s and the 60s was, I believe, America's favorite pastime. It's like there were bowling alleys in every town. Sometimes they had more than one, and everybody bowled. Uh, I mean, it, it, you can see it in the culture of anything like that because um, the Flintstones, they bowled. Uh, Big Lebowski, the whole movie is basically set about them gathering at a bowling alley. Bowling was huge. Uh, everybody bowled. Even as a kid, I was in a bowling league. All my friends were in bowling leagues. Uh, parents were in bowling leagues. Everybody bowled. It was a thing. I don't know why. ABC had a TV show called Bowling for Dollars uh, back in the 80s uh, where people would bowl for money. Uh, and it was prime time. Bowling was huge. Now today, bowling's kind of gone past everything like nobody really goes to bowling and now bowling's turned into this it's not really bowling anymore it's cosmic bowling and stuff like that where it's uh, sports stuff's going on and they're having dances and all sorts of stuff just trying to get people into a bowling alley now bowling's been around for a hundred plus years the heyday really was in the 50s 60s and 70s when bowling was the king in america at least so but one thing if you go to a bowling alley and you're gonna be on a team, you need a bowling shirt. Uh, back then, everybody wore uniforms uh, to signify who they were and what they did. You know, from like the gas station guy, he had a uniform, to the waitress, she had a uniform. Everyone wore uniforms back in the day and you knew exactly what they were. Uh, and bowling was no exception. So this is something I just picked up. I've, I've found these a lot over the years. Lately, I have not. I think everyone's kind of picked these things up. Bowling shirts are actually called sometimes called camp shirts. Uh, if you remember the ship Sopranos, they wore a lot of those Nat Nass, uh, Swingers. Uh, I mean, there's tons of movies and shows. Everyone's wearing bowling stuff. Uh, but the true bowling shirts are real bowling shirts. And uh, generally they were rayon and later they became like a rayon mix. And then later they became like a polyester. Uh, you can find those. I used to, every time I would find them, they, they would sell very fast. This is no exception. This is the one I just picked up. This is a green men's, uh, but it could be a woman's, but it's a small. So it's a King Louis, uh, and I'll show you close-ups of logos and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but a bowling shirt's usually made by swingers, or swingsers, uh, King Louis. Uh, there's another one in there, I can't remember. But they made just bowling shirts, and this one even has a little bowling guy here on the collar. I'll do another close-up for that. But the thing is, you would, like a team of four, would all get the same shirt. And then, but to signify who they were, they would usually have the name of either the corporation they were working for, or the group, or the club name. And usually the club names were Silly Bowling, you know, the, the Pinsters, or something like that. You know what I mean? Uh, this particular one is called uh, the Foot Printer, uh, and this is from Fresno, Fresno, California, uh, and this is Chapter 11. <clears throat> and again, I'll show you the close-ups of these. These were all chain-stitched on the back of the shirt with usually a Singer 114, 103, or a Carnelli. Uh, you can see my past videos on uh, chain-stitch embroidery and vintage sewing machines is another thing I'm into. Uh, and so on the front, they would usually just have the guy's name, and this was uh, Riley, it says right here. And again, I'll show you the close-ups. And then on the back, uh, his last name, which would be uh, Shelton, and the foot printers uh, from Fresno. And now I looked up foot printers because I didn't know what it was. It's actually like a, it's a police organization. So it's not really police officers, but it's police organizations of trackers in a way. Uh, called the foot printers. And so this is like a tracking police 
group or something along that nature. So obviously there was guys who belonged to that. They said, hey, let's do a bowling. And they all started their own little league or they got into a league and they, this was their team in the league and they all had shirts. So uh, I'm going to uh, show you on, uh, I'll put it up on uh, the hanger like I normally do and do some close-ups and you can see what the shirt is and kind of how cool it is. So if you're a small uh, and you love this shirt, let me know because it is available for sale. It's too, too small for me. Uh, I used to wear them. Uh, and then later I kind of got out of bowling shirts a little bit because I was, you, you change, your, your fashion changes. Uh, but uh, without any uh, further ado, uh, let's put it up on the hanger and take a look at it. So here it is. Uh, you can see it's in just, I mean, it obviously needs ironed, but it's in really fantastic shape. There's no stains. Uh, even doesn't even smell like smoke because that's one thing if, <laughs> if you ever... Uh, visit a bowling alley in the 70s or 80s you would come back and smell like smoke for about four days uh, everybody smoked and it's a, a combined uh, or confined area so you uh, <laughs> it's just one of those things about bowling alleys so you can see it's a short shirt uh, that generally came to uh, right right below your waist uh, right below your belt here you can see the uh, King Louis by Holiday size small and it says right roll collar so it has a special collar that they uh, sewed so that it would roll correctly now this would have had some information you can kind of see it says king louis but it's really kind of washed out um so that's kind of a shame but you can't quite see that this is what's called a loop collar you've probably seen these on vintage shirts this is pretty classic uh so it's a little loop and over here there's a little button uh, rarely did anyone actually use those. Basically, they just did that. So, so instead of a button hole, they put this little loop there just to make it look a little nicer so you don't have a hole there uh, on your lapel area of your shirt. Uh, you can see it's got these iridescent uh, plastic buttons all the way down and two on the pocket. And then here you can see chain stitched uh, in cursive Riley. Uh, this guy. This bowling shirt that came with a little bowling man. This would have come from the factory that way. Uh, so it would have been green with this and that's it. Uh, the police organization guy put a little flag on it. That comes with it. I'm not going to take it off. Um, and then down here somewhere. Where is it? I think it's on this side. Yeah, here it is. There's a little, uh, just so you know, you're buying union. That's a little uh, union tag. Uh, so that's those are little telltale signs to tell if it's a real shirt or a reproduction stuff like this This is real. So uh, let's flip her over and this is where the magic is. This is what makes the bowling shirt Valuable uh, if it was just plain, you know, it's a $30 shirt with this it changes everything and it depends what's on it This is a really cool. I think really cool back uh, the foot printer and it even has a barefoot with 11 and Fresno. So until you actually research it, you don't really know what this is. Uh, but Fresno, obviously, Fresno, California, which I think bumps up the uh, cool factor a little bit because uh, it's California, particularly in the 50s. Uh, and then it's the foot printer. Uh, and with this, this is actually, this is all hand done. Uh, and this is the guy's last name so that uh, you can see who is up because generally you would see the back of the shirt uh, as the person's looking at the pins and everyone's sitting in the background. So you can see who it is and you can see, oh, that's Sheldon. Uh, so you can see the, the really nice chain stitching throughout this. There's really no damage to it. He, didn't, he only wore this, obviously, while bowling. He didn't wear this afterwards because it's not washed out, it's not faded. It's, it's just super, super nice. Uh, and you can see here, too, one of the things they do... It has like this um, kind of a by swing back here, like on a jacket. And uh, so they do that so that when you're bowling, you have full motion of your hand as you're, as you're bowling and your shirt can give and it's not tight and restrictive. Later in the 70s with the polyester stuff, I don't think it really has that quite that stretch. It just has that, I don't know, that polyester feel. I don't like those. I love this. This is I'm sure this is like a rayon cotton mix. Um, it's not pure rayon because it doesn't have that uh, Hawaiian shirt feel, but uh, it's definitely cotton, and I'm pretty sure there's some rayon in there too. Uh, 
So this is it, and there's the by swing on this side too. Now on the inside, here you can tell that it's really stitched. Uh, so they had a backing paper uh, and they stitched over top of it for the whole thing. You can see these are the little threads uh, that the uh, person, the artist who did that on the back did. So it's really cool. I love bowling shirts and I pick them up the instant I see one uh, just because, again, these were made strictly for bowling. These weren't made for guys just to hang out at a bar and look hipster. These are the real deal. Um, this is, this is why they're so cool, because uh, they were only made for bowling, which is really cool. So, uh, and again, these there's there should be three identical shirts to these somewhere, and probably in different sizes, and they'll say a different guy's name on them. But I'm sure there's three of them, or there were, with Footprinter, Chapter 11 Fresno. Cool shirt, huh? If you'd like to see more of this sort of stuff, just subscribe and keep watching because I'll always be putting out new videos of cool stuff I pick up uh, or have in my collection uh, that you might be interested in. Maybe learning a little bit about something. Maybe you're never really, you've seen them, but you didn't know about them. And now you know a little bit more about bowling shirts. Uh, so you can kind of spot them when you're out in the wild uh, of the thrift store or state sale or just some dude walking down the street and you go, oh, look at that, that's, a, that's an original bowling shirt. Uh, now, of course, they reproduce these things a lot and you can uh, purchase new shirts and have them redone with, especially with everybody getting into the chain stitch stuff, which is uh, kind of really cool because now you can actually go find a guy that does the chain stitching and have him do something really cool on the back of your shirt to make it really unique and pop. Uh, and if you need help with finding those guys, let me know too, because I know a few of them because I've probably sold them stuff from my sewing uh, industrial stuff. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode and I will see you on the next Derek Does.